Hello, this is Larry Merck, and I'm the Gimp Wizard. Today, we're going to do a beautiful picture, at least I think so. It's uh, got this nice 3D mountain landscape. It's got these cities inside bubbles, and then a nice background. So without further ado, let's just get right to it, and we'll show you how we make this picture. First, I'm starting out with this beautiful 3D picture of a mountain background, which I got using Mandible 3D, and a nice gentleman called Callie on the Fractal Forums said that I could use this fractal which he actually came up with and it just uh, makes a beautiful uh, picture I think of this mountain and I'm going to be using GIMP of course as an editor and I'm going to start out by doing U for a fuzzy select so we can select the sky here now before I try to delete the sky what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure we add an alpha channel so I'm, I'm going to go to the layer and click on add alpha channel and then we're going to just do delete and this way we're going to delete the sky and it should just take uh, a few deletes, it should be pretty quick and of course if I were better with Mandible 3D no doubt there's probably some good trick for having it not even draw in the sky and I would have had to do this but eventually hopefully I'll become better alright uh, so that didn't take too long I had to delete the sky this way so there we go now we should be in pretty good shape all right there we go so now we've got the foreground of the mountain what I'm gonna do though is if you see this you might not be able to see it on your screen but there's a lot of pixelation going on here and in order to fix that I'm just gonna do a simple blur and it goes from being a little bit yucky pixels to being a nice shading just by doing a simple blur like this all of a sudden I think it looks perfect so now we've got our foreground mountain and I think we're in good shape. So I'm going to show you that the next thing I did was I had this fractal that I came up with just randomly playing around with the J Wildfire and it came up with this fractal which I thought sort of looked neat. So it looks like a city to me. Hopefully uh, it does to you too. But uh, all I wanted to do is clean it up a little bit. So I, I erased some of the things around the outside and so I'm going to show you what I did. First we'll just delete this because we don't need it anymore and I'll just show you my final picture ended up coming out like this so there's the cleaned up that's our city alright so next let's just duplicate that so I'm going to duplicate this layer oops control Z undo I had the wrong layer chosen there we go now we've got our city and I'm going to duplicate this because now what I want to do is I want to put it inside one of those glass balls so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with this being black and now this process I'm using to make this glass dome is uh, something I saw in Marty at Blue Lightning TV he's on uh, YouTube also and he made a demonstration of how to make a snow globe so we're going to basically be using that process so we start out by going filter and we're going to do a lens flare and we'll put the lens flare a little off center up to the left now this is a little bit different than how Marty did it because he has uh, Photoshop and of course I'm doing this in GIMP but the same basic ideas will apply here more or less so then we're going to go to filters and we're going to do a distort and we're going to go to polar coordinates and right now we don't want to go to polar we're going to go from polar to rectangular so we go just like that and then what we do is we flip our image vertically and so I can simply hold down the control key to make it flip vertically and now let's anchor that down and now what we want to do I think let's try uh, we're going to go to the filters and then we're going to reshow polar coordinates However, this time we are going to go to polar coordinates. And just like that, there we go. Let's hide the city for now just to see what we've got. All right, so so there we've got the more or less look of the sphere, our glass dome. But really all we want is the white shading for the glass dome. We don't really want a ball like that. So watch this trick. We're going to copy this 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this onto the layer mask. And we'll anchor it onto the layer mask. And so now our layer mask is there, but I actually want it all to be blacked out except the part of the ball. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a fuzzy select and we'll select these edges and I'm going to make mask them also. So I'm going to drag the black onto that. Okay, so now you can see on our mask it's all masked out except for the circle in the middle. So now what we do is we'll go back to the main image there for the sphere. And we're just going to paint all white there. So it'll be all white, but then we'll have the mask that's going to turn this into our glass ball that we see here. So that worked out pretty well, I'd say. We've got the glass dome made just like that. But instead of having this all with a mask and all, let's have it apply the mask so we don't need to have this looking like this. So down here, I think there's a way to actually apply it. Let's see, I don't do this very often. All right, so there's apply layer mask, which you don't see, but so now we don't have the separate layer mask and all. It actually applied it. So now we actually have our dome there. And now if we take a look, there's our dome on top of the future city. So we've got it looking pretty good, I'd say. But uh, another little thing I like to do here is I didn't really want my dome to be a sphere. I wanted the bottom to be sort of flattened, more or less, just uh, the way I pictured it in my mind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the bottom part. We're going to go about halfway. So somewhere around here. And we'll just make sure we get this whole bottom half of the dome. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use our scale tool. We'll click on the bottom half here. And then all I have to do is drag it straight up. And I'm just going to bring it up about halfway. Who knows, something like that. And let's say scale. And there we go. I think that uh, should be what we want to do. Now we'll anchor this back down. And let's see, one more thing. Let's go to the city picture. And the city, I don't want all this black. Actually, we want it to be clear so you can see past the city. So I'm going to, once again, go fuzzy select. And we'll click on the black area. And we'll just click delete. And then control A. So now we've got the city inside the glass bulb, and that's more or less what we want. Let's see, another thing I want to do is if we take this city, I want to change the color of it, and we can change it very easily just by using Colorize. So we'll go Colorize, and we could change it to any color we want, but the color I came up with was just bring this all the way to the left, a sort of brownish color. We'll go with that. We'll say OK. And now I'm going to merge down the glass bubble on top of our city, so it'll be very easy to work with. We'll merge it down. All right, so now it's a matter of just putting the city where we want to put it. So I'm going to do Control-C, and then we're going to go down to this layer below, the mountain layer. I'm going to hide that city, and then I can just say Control-V, and we can keep putting the city wherever we want to. And I'm going to use the Scale tool to move it and scale it each time because we're going to put a bunch of these all over the mountain here and when we want to scale it always hold down the control key to make sure the ratio remains the same uh, and then we just move it to where we want I thought I put one of them right about there and then we can just click on scale to confirm that that's okay so we just click here and there we've got one and then we can just anchor that down and we've got one city and then we can just say control V and then we're gonna do exactly the same thing we click on it to scale it we are gonna hold down the control as we drag this and now each time we're gonna wanna make these a little bit smaller cause they're gonna we want the illusion that we're going further into the distance with each one 
So this one I is going to put right about here. And we might have to scale it a little more, who knows. So we'll just drag it down a little bit and then we'll say scale. And then we'll anchor that down. And then we'll say control V and do exactly the same process. I want it to do five of these so it, it's going to take just a little while. But nothing too tricky here. And then we grab the middle of it. Usually you can just move it that way very quickly. We'll just put this one right here. And maybe we want to make it still a little smaller. Okay, then we say scale and then we anchor that one down. And then we're going to say control V to place another one. And then we'll use hold down the control, drag this down quite a bit. We're going to make these last ones pretty small, relatively. And let's get this out of the way so that we can put our last two future cities somewhere, or alien cities, whatever they are. Let's see, we'll put, who knows, let's see, put one of them, let's say, maybe right there. Great. And then we'll anchor that down, and then we just have to put our last city in, and then we'll get working on the background. So control V to place one more. We'll click on this. And then we'll hold down the control. Now this one will make pretty small because this is the furthest one in the background. And then we'll drag it up. And to make it a little neat, we'll make it actually sticking out over the top of the mountain there so you can see the sky behind it. All right, that should be pretty good. Okay, now we just have to make our background. I want to make a nice moon and some other layers, so let's uh, do a new layer. And we don't have to do anything special, but let's just drag this down. And then we're actually going to want four layers or so, I believe, so I'm just going to make them all real quick. And let's see. Uh, first of all, I guess we could work on the moon. To do the moon, I'm going to actually say File, New. I think it's going to be easiest just to do with a new file. And I'm going to make it be 1080 by 1080. And white is good for a moon. I like that. Let's do view and make sure we see the entire moon. So we're going to zoom and we're going to say fit the image in the window. So now we can see it all. Now watch this trick for making a quick, nice looking moon, I think. We're going to use our paintbrush. And the brush that I'm going to use is forest. But you know, most of the time with these things, if you just find any nice texture, it really doesn't even matter. So um, let's go down here and see if I can find the forest brush. Here it is, and it's really 256 by 256 native resolution, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to gra grab it and make it as big as we can because that's going to make it about a size of 1,000 or who knows, something, something in that area. Okay, so we're going to be painting in black. So watch this, just in one uh, brush stroke, boom, we've got our moon surface. And now all we have to do, let's see, um, let's make sure that we uh, have an alpha channel. So I'm going to right click here and I'm going to go down and do add alpha channel. And then if we just use our filter and I'm going to use a distort lens and it's going to just make it look like a moon that easily. You're going to make set surroundings to be transparent and say OK. And then I'm going to say Control C to copy that. And then if we go back to our image and we'll say Control V. Oops, you know what? Let's undo. I'd actually uh, like to make this first thing I just do a delete so it's 
transparent, and then now we're going to do control V to put the moon on top, and then we're going to do M to move. So let's just move our moon into place. I'll go with point it something like that. And that's good enough to me for the moon layer. We'll just do anchor that down. Now we've got the moon. So now let's make the background. So the first, the bottom layer, I want to show some nice green. Our plant's sort of greenish. So let's grab uh, some type of green color here. Here's a green, we'll say OK. And this just takes some playing around to get colors that you end up being happy with. So we've got green at the bottom, and then the next thing I want to do on the next layer, I'm going to make a bright red going to a darker red. So the bright red is going to be maybe lit up by the moon. So around the moon, it's going to be a bright red. And then further away, so we're going to mark here, and we're going to go with a bit darker of a red. Okay, something like that should work. And then now if we do L for our blend tool, let's take a look and make sure we set this to some specific settings. We're going to want the shape to be radial. And then I'm going to make this offset be around 50%. Because I want to start out and not have it worry about where it's starting. It's just going to start the gradient halfway out with the red going to the dark red. And so we're going to go something like this. And you can't see it yet, but uh, that's because we've got another layer covering it up. See, there's this layer on top of it, which you'll see in a minute. But let's change our view so we can see everything again. View, zoom, fit image to window. So now we can see the entire window. All right, now comes our big trick on the top window. We're going to add some cloud noise. So we're going to go filter, render, and let's get some clouds. And we just do solid noise. Once again, I'm going to raise this Y value up to 8 or so. So the clouds are more sideways. Hit the random seed a couple times so we get a seed that we haven't used before. Okay, so now that we've got the clouds, what we want to do is we're going to use the mode to burn them. So we'll get interesting looking clouds. And now, what I'm also going to do is see the red is covering everything up. I'm going to change the opacity of this until it comes out to what we want so that if we can change it to somewhere about like that, then uh, let's see. One more thing I think we might do with this layer. Let's make this layer be screen mode, and that way we'll be able to see the green below it. All right, so now we get to see yellowish red around our moon, and yet we'll see green around the edges of the screen, something like that. And I think uh, our picture is pretty much done. We've got our beautiful moon, a lovely, uh, crazy-looking sky, and then we've got the mountains in the foreground that we use Mandible 3D to make, and we've got these nice J Wildfire fractals for our cities, and then we've got Marty from Blue Lightning TV's glass domes and we put it all together to make a lovely futuristic crazy picture. I hope everybody enjoyed that and play around with it on your own and make your own beautiful pictures using these fractals and, and GIMP to make whatever you want to. Please like this video, share it with your friends, uh, subscribe to me, I'm GIMP Wizard on YouTube and as usual Please go to larrymerk.deviantart.com to see all my pictures, and you can see uh, the information for making that mandible fractal. Goodbye, all.